and thank you for putting on the recording. Uh, we've done a roll call. We have six uh, members out of our nine, so we have a quorum. So this is an official meeting. Our first agenda item is to approve the minutes from the May 5th meeting. Um, those were sent out to members earlier. Um, are there any comments or questions or changes or edits to the May 5th meetings? Okay. Can I have a motion to um, approve the minutes? Second. 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 Thank you. Uh, roll call, Mr. Follender? Aye. Mr. Soden? Aye. And Ms. Edelman? Aye. Ms. Boardman? Aye. Ms. Miller? Aye. And Mr. Welch says aye. The minutes are approved unanimously by, by roll call vote. Uh, next on our agenda is a uh, town update from Marcia Rasmussen. Marcia, I I yield the floor. All right. Well, I sent it out late today, so I apologize for not getting it out sooner. But um, for the phase 2B update uh, that our project meeting uh, last week, that um, the, re the request to extend the date to November 30th has been approved. Bridge will not be open to the public. I specifically asked if they would be willing to open it at any earlier time. And they said it will not be officially open to the public until the project is completed. Um, this is for liability reasons for the contractor. Um, staining was completed, and, but there's been some delay in the application of the anti-graffiti um, material that will cover that. So, um, again, due to supply chain issues, and um, they are expecting to resolve that shortly and um, get that taken care of. And then um, Delia Kay and I, along with Mass DOT staff, will be walking the site, the trail with the contractor next week to identify any, um, any final branches or limbs that might need to be removed prior to the um, final um, installation of the top course of asphalt, which will go in in July. On 2C, uh, you have the draft report. Um, Nat sent that out last Friday. Uh, it has been posted to the town's website as of today. Um, so people can take a look at it there, but that is the draft report for the um, Junction Park conceptual redesign recommendations. Um, I wanna report that the Willard Service Day project uh, involved 19 fifth graders and five adults from the Willard School. Um, that was on June 2nd. And Natural Resources Director Delia Kay and I uh, discussed what invasives were, uh, showed the students what they, what they were, and they, um, they were so enthusiastic about removing knotweed and the um, black swallowwort, which was a really in, a dreadful infestation right along the sidewalk on Powder Mill Road. Um, great group, it was, it was amazing. So, um, and we were very delighted to have Richard Follender join us from the committee. So thank you, Richard. Um, also following those removal efforts, we had a small group um, preparing some planting beds and ordered some perennial plants. They didn't arrive in time, which was probably a good thing because of the kids' enthusiasm. They probably would have been trampled. But last Friday, uh, we had a group of volunteers that worked with the Natural Resources Division help install, um, plant 50 columbine, 50 coneflower, and 50 asters, which will provide um, pollinator species with um, food uh, in the three seasons, uh, early summer, late summer, and fall. Um, then we, the moving on quick, to the- Quick question, I'm sorry, yeah. Marcia. Are these, are those uh, perennials or annuals? They are perennials. Yeah. Okay, so they'll be, they'll be continuing to give. Okay, great, thank Correct. you. And, and we, we informed um, Concord Public Works of where they're located and they are aware so that they won't mow them down as they did um, when this was first planted uh, in the beginning. And I just had a quick question, Marcia. I, are you the one who picks them out? Is this another of your areas of expertise? It's amazing you know, that you know what to plant and where to plant. Um, I, I worked with Delia Kay. Uh, she okay. has a resource called New Moon Nursery. They do whole, wholesale. Uh, we have done a number of these pollinator meadow type plantings in various locations around town. So, um, okay. Huh. That's fascinating. Thank you. Okay. Um, I do see a hand up, Nat, if you want to. Yeah, Barbara, go ahead. 
Um, Marsha, I noticed that you had some pictures in your report. It'd be great if we could get a report and a couple of pictures for the fall newsletter. I realize the spring summer just came out, but it's called Plan Ahead and we'd love to give, <laughs> give them credit and, and um, I'll need to get permission from the Willard School they, um, okay. to do that. So um, I will reach out to the school. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, then on to the last half mile uh, revised plans. The 100% design has been posted. Um, back in May, Natural Resources Director Delia Kay and I met with uh, representatives from the Old Picard Farm Trust too to discuss the proposed path and the break in the fence um, that uh, along the white pond stretch of the trail and reached agreement about what would happen there. Um, we are going to have a continuous piece of fence. There won't be a break in the fence, but it will stop short of where the slope begins to rise up. There's an existing path there. And that path can connect to, that path connects to existing uh, trails to the Old Picard Farm Trust land. And we will create a new path on the state land to access the town land. So um, that is in the works. We also discussed with, yes, Nat. Yeah, just a question on that. Did we, is there like a memo that will go out that says, here's what we're doing just so we can have it on the website? Uh, we can do that, but we have okay. it. We, we okay, I just, I just want to make sure we kind of memorialize yeah. no, no, this. That's so really good. Um, okay, I think we you. did it by email, but I, I certainly understand why you might want to do that okay, uh, or you. have us do that. Um, and then we discussed um, the land manager for the town, Will Holden, has access to a router and has made some really nice wooden signs that we can install in different locations. So rather than use the standard metal um, Mass DOT signs for private property, no trespassing, um, Mass DOT agreed to install the posts and we will create the wooden signs for the future uh, to, to install once the project has been completed. So um, I think that was a good resolution for, for that um, aspect. Um, additionally, the contract, uh, we needed to do an amendment to the contract with GPI uh, for final coordination. Um, given all the, the discussions that we've had about the, the fencing and the cost estimates that we've needed and so forth, um, and, as well as coordination with the Sudbury consultant on the final resolution of the various issues. Um, they were short uh, about $5,000. So I did have that money available in uh, community preservation funds. And so uh, we've um, prepared that contract amendment. Um, then I did get an update on the phase 2D in Sudbury uh, late this afternoon from um, the Sudbury project manager, Beth Sudmeyer. Uh, she indicated that all environmental permits have been cleared and she's working on obtaining signatures for the various temporary easements. She believes the July advertising date remains good, provided that all easements are recorded and the right-of-way issues have been resolved. So that's good news. That's an earlier start uh, in terms of the advertising. Um, our phase 2B did not go to advertising until I think in uh, September, October. Uh, so if they get this head start, they actually, we may see something happening sooner rather than later in Sudbury. That would be great. Can I ask you a question? Um, yeah. So the um, phase two, uh, the last half mile is tied to the Sudbury project. So yes. it's being bid at the same time. Correct. Do we have any idea which end they're gonna start at? No, we do not. It is up to the contractor. The, it, um, the state does not dictate uh, how the contract uh, is, is handled. Uh, it is up to the contractor to design or to decide how they want to implement uh, and construct the project. Is, is it, because um, I, I was just thinking that it would be really nice if the early part of the work done uh, would be, you know, finishing the last half mile to 117. Um, I don't know how other member, members feel, but, um, is there any, like, could we write a letter to? No. Well, yeah, you can always write a letter. Okay. Um, You're really good at writing letters. Is, is there, <laughs> excuse me, Marcia, do you know if there's parking at 117? 
because I think they would be reluctant to like open it unless there was parking there already, right? The, the location is very near their Davis Field, which is a, a, yeah. has a massive parking lot. Yeah, um, so it. I think that that's, that's what right. we're going to be relying on at 117. Okay. Um, and, and recall that you know, this is done uh, one, one stretch at a time. They yeah. put in the base course the entire length, and then they do the tree trimming yeah. the entire length. So it's not easy to uh, focus on just a half mile when uh, it takes a lot to get the. Got it. Yeah. I think. Yeah, got it. Got it. Can I, I it. ask? Um, Sorry for my ignorance. Easement. Explain again. I've learned what right of way means now. So I, you know, I've made progress in the last year. But what is easement? <laughs> you did very well, Deb. You did very well. <laughs> well having a quiz later on. Right. I was choice. afraid. <laughs> Sometimes, um, as you when you want to access the right of way, you have to go over private property or town land to do that. Okay. And so the state requires you to obtain an easement from the property owner that allows them to access that point. Um, okay. There might be other instances where if you have a slope that you need to cut back or some landscaping that you need to trim that is on private property, again, you need that temporary easement to allow you to do that. Um, in some cases, they are permanent easements if you, okay. it, for slopes and all. So that's, it, that's getting permission from the private property owner to, implement something along the trail. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much. Okay, quiz at nine, okay? I'll be sending it out. <laughs> okay. Um, our Community good. Connections Grant, uh, we finalized the work as required by the end of May. Um, we found that there was one panel missing and uh, Public Works, I thank them for doing everything. They, they did an awesome job. Um, the con the um, manufacturer is going to provide us with an additional panel and the uh, metal to fast the metal fasteners. So that is coming. Uh, we just finalized that this week. So um, stay tuned, but I think it's great. I hope to see it used soon. And I'm thinking that we might need to put in some fencing or some other protection uh, for the cars that are going by there, but um, it's a start. I rode, I rode by, it looked really good mm, great. Um, the, the other day. And there were also, I noticed a whole bunch of bikes uh, Concord bikes or something like they're a white. Are those the shared bikes? Those are the bike share. Yes. Okay. And we found that there, we had um, an additional $8,200. Um, so we are going to uh, purchase two uh, um, adaptive bikes for um, uh, ADA use, you know, people nice. who have disabilities. So nice. um, we just priced that out and we'll be um, seeking those this week. Um, so I was really delighted to know that we had some money left over and that we would be able to use it in that fashion. That's great. Thank you. Um, uh, and then uh, Concord Prison, uh, uh, the Concord Prison Cemetery. Um, I don't didn't get any formal update on the the physical piece of it, but I know tomorrow night is the um, the program naming the unnamed, where the students from. Um, Mass Art. Mass Art will be yeah. presenting um, their project between 6.30 and 7.30 p.m., both in person and via Zoom. So I think, um, I, Richard, if, I don't know if you want to add, add anything to that. You yeah, I'll be that. there. Um, I, I, I think the, uh, I, I saw, I got a little preview of it. it it's, it's pretty interesting. The uh, students have taken, done research on each, on, on the prisoners, found out about them, and then have created artwork um, that will be displayed uh, related to that prisoner or their reaction to what they found out. So the, uh, the people at Concord Prison Outreach will be at the meeting. And um, I don't know if any students are going to be there. And I think that the, the teacher, professor, whoever who organized the project oh, yeah, is going to be on Zoom. So yeah, it's 630 and it will be, you know, it won't go on and on. So if anybody can else show up. That'd be great. I'm going to and, be there. Do you know how long that will be installed at the library? I'm not sure it's being installed at all. Oh, okay. At this point. So it's that just was, that prison. I think once we see it, then we'll, we'll talk about installation. Okay, <laughs> As okay. you know, we've got the, the new space at the library. I'm also on the Friends of the Library. So everybody's being very careful about how the new space gets used. <laughs> so, That's very good. Yeah. And then uh, finally, the, the um, 
Mass Office of Tourism and Travel Wayfinding Grant uh, with the town of Acton. They are soliciting quotes for the fabrication and installation of the wayfinding signage along the trail in both Acton and Concord. And those quotes are expected to be submitted tomorrow. So we'll have more information. Um, and I've requested that um, the, the various signs be individually priced so that we might be able to purchase um, additional signage uh, in the future. Um, and that's my report. And any questions from members? Can you just um, refresh my recollection? What would be an example of one of the signs that Acton is thinking of putting up? What would it look like? Do you, do you recall? Well, we reviewed those at the last meeting. Um, they are posts with, with the dragonfly symbol in a circle yes. up above and, and directional signs. That was one. And then the other was a curved sign, yeah. uh, which I think might work um, if, if this committee agrees in Junction Park as, as mm. introductions to, to welcome yeah. and to alert people that it's, um, yeah. this is a special place and to respect um, other users type of thing. Okay. So that, that, thank you. It, the reason I think I was thrown off is um, in my day job, you know, the one I spend, you know, the nine to five, so to speak, I work with people with, with various abilities um, and so interpretive has a sometimes a different meaning with people that have, you know, um, hearing uh, different abilities. So inter I got, I was like, interpretive, hold on, you know, so. Got it. That's good. I did, um, Marcia, I had one question. <laughs> Wayfinding, yes. Um, I, I, um, my wife and I rode the, um, the across the Assabet Bridge and we stopped at the sign there, the, the interpreter sign uh, for Deb. For Deb. Um, and one of the things I noticed was that the map did not actually have the trail on it. it was, I was just curious how that, you, was there any reason that the, that the trail was not put on the map that shows the area? I don't know. Okay, no worries. That, it's not a big deal. I was just, I just noticed it. So, and you know who I am with maps. I love maps. Okay. Uh, Marcia, thank you very much. And on behalf of the committee, I thank you and your team for, for all the work that you're doing. Um, we're going to move to uh, committee business now on the on the agenda, and um, the first item of business is Junction Park conceptual redesign report, um, which is uh, due to the select board. Uh, as as a reminder, we were asked to make written recommendations to the select board on the conceptual redesign of Junction Park to ensure the safety and separation of two types of park users. Uh, re wheeled recreational users and pedestrians and people using assistive devices or, or wheelchairs. We were to include a recommendation for a short-term proposal that would help address increased ridership due to the completion of the Route 2 bridge, originally for July 22, but now November 22. Um, and the, the timing is we need to deliver our, our recommendation report to the select board no later than June 30th, which is was it 20, um, some 15 days away or whatever. So the, the, your co-chairs, Richard and I, building on the work of the Junction Park Subcommittee, and thank you to Tracy and Adrian for, for all their work on that, um, completed a draft report um, that has been sent to each member and posted on the committee website. The draft report includes three recommendations. Recommendation one was approved unanimously by roll call uh, vote of this committee um, on, at our April 7th meeting. And recommendation one is the committee recommends that we take an approach that alerts trail users that they are entering a shared space, that they are accountable for safe and respectful behaviors. We also recommend adding two or three aesthetically pleasing physical barriers, e.g. planters in two locations in the park to help direct trail users to the correct routes through the park. The short-term solution should include a gateway arch arches at, at entrances to the park, both to welcome trail users and to signify that they need to adapt new behaviors in the space. Existing signage is excessive and ineffective. Current signage should be replaced with limited signage that conveys a positive message to be aware and respectful of park users. So that's, I just read the recommendation one. In the report, there's a further, in the, in the, in the, in a, a further section, a, a more detailed explanation of where that recommendation came from. The second recommendation was approved unanimously by roll call 
um, by roll call of this committee on our May 5th meeting. And that's a long-term reconceptual design. And we recommend that an eight foot wide path be constructed on the west edge of the park, the west edge of the railroad right of way, that is to physically separate trail users from park users. A defined rail trail path will create a safer space for everyone. Uh, we've included farther on in the report, um, so, um, a diagram of, of that. Um, and we've also included diagrams of everything else that we looked at over the course of this work. The third recommendation was originally brought up in November. I think Deb was one of the uh, first people to mention it, but I think everyone has kind of, we've all signed on to it. Um, and it's been added as a, as a safety issue, as it is a safety issue for trail users and for park users. Um, and if there are no, rec no objections to this, recommendation three would be approved as part of the language of the overall report. Um, and recommendation three is the committee finds that the MBTA Fitchburg commuter rail crossing at the north end of Junction Park is a significant safety hazard, having already been the site of one fatal accident. While not explicitly part of this task force, uh, of, of the task of the task force set forth by the select board, the committee strongly recommends that the town immediately engage with the MBTA to make that crossing safer by adding, at a minimum, pedestrian warning lights electronically tied to the automated crossing gates on Commonwealth Avenue. So the, those are the three recommendations. To, uh, there's a lot more obviously in the, in the report. Uh, tonight, the committee will deliberate on the report, uh, get input from members and the public, and then vote um, on whether to send the report and any updates or corrections discussed tonight to the select board. For our deliberations, when we sent out the, uh, the email, I requested that any typos, um, grammatical errors, et cetera, just be emailed back to me. And thank you for those of you who did point out uh, that Microsoft uh, uh, review doesn't catch everything. But uh, so we're, we're, I think we're in good shape there. But um, for our deliberations, I'd ask that members, uh, if anyone has any material concerns or significant issues, with the draft report. So I'd like to open up the floor to members with regard to that question. Are there any major issues with the report as, as we put it together? Okay, do you, do you, does everyone feel it kind of reflects the work that we did and the direction that we wanted to, um, to you know, to, to take this task? Richard, you're, you're muted. I thought the uh, report was very thorough and uh, very well written. Okay. Richard? Are we expecting a motion to? Eventually. Or... Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I thought we, we'd discuss it first. Sure. And then open it up. Um, you know, if I, I'd like to hear if Marcia has any comments next and then open it up to the public for public comments and, and input. Um, and then, um, you know, capture any edits or, or changes, and then make a motion to approve the, you know, approve sending the report on to the committee with these changes included. So that was the intent. Thank you for, for that point of order, Mr. Follender. Other comments or, or thoughts? Well, just as a, a comment, uh, I was re reading this in all the appendixes, I was reminded of a high school algebra teacher Show your work. We sure did. <laughs> well done. Well, I, I think, I mean, I think one of the points is that we did, we, and I mean, not just this committee and the subcommittee, but I think a lot of people in the town participated. And there happened to be a couple of people on this call who, who you know, on this, on the Zoom meeting who participated heavily in, in moving this forward. And I think it's important that the select board know the kind of work that everyone was involved in, whether it's a, the, the public forums, whether it's a subcommittee work, um, et, et cetera. So good point, John. And I wanted to point out <clears throat> that way in the beginning, we started with principles. And I remember when you sent that request to consider the principles and develop them, that I, you know, I probably was a little annoyed. Why are you starting with principles? But when you think about it, and principles equal mission, and the principles helped keep us, you know, in the guardrails or in the boundaries uh, of what we had established as our goals and objectives. So, so I think 
that has helped to make us successful. Uh, but I do really want to just, um, I know Adrian, you're here. I can say thank you to you um, as as well as, I don't know why I've been blanking on her name, but- Tracy, you're, um, Tracy's in yeah, Paris. Tracy, right? yes, well, so she has no excuse. Um, <laughs> but just the stellar work uh, that was performed, but really those principles were the ammunition, if you will, that really got us kickstarted. Right. Thank you. Any other comments from, from members? And, and what I'm taking away um, is that there's no material issues with what we put together. Um, um, so I'd, I'd like to open the floor, Marcia, to, to you and, and I guess as representative of the town. Um, are there, are there or, or the town staff, I'm thinking, are there any material issues you have or comments? No, I, I think um, I appreciate the work and effort that was put into this this whole report and the whole process. Uh, appreciate your leadership, Nat, through all of this, uh, through some some challenging conversations and discussions. So I truly appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, um, and now I'd like to open it up to the public. Um, if anybody has any. Um, um, you know, material issues or comments. And again, this is not, this is just our report that's going to the select board. Obviously there'll be uh, an opportunity to, um, Richard, when are we scheduled with the select board? Do you remember? Uh, July 11th. July 11th, we've been July asked 11th. by, yeah, but by uh, Matt Johnson and, and Terry Ackerman to defend our, our findings. Um, I'm, I'm joking about that, to, to, to be available to answer questions from the select board. So Richard and I are planning to be there. And any of you are welcome as well, but- uh, Matt, is that just a regular select board meeting? So like any of us could- Correct. Access yeah. Yeah. Anybody, can, everybody can attend that, yeah. Come on down. It'll be face-to-face -to -face too, I believe. Yeah, it's not a meeting of us. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we'll, may, if, if those of us come down, Matt retired to some nearby establishment afterwards. <laughs> Or come out to my backyard, one of the right, two. Okay. <laughs> right. And you and you'll make the details available um, of where that is on the eleventh or what yep. time, etc. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. The, it's also so, zoomable, so yeah, it's zoomable. And again, it's not a formal meeting of our committee. Just that the the chairs are have been asked to appear before the select board to talk about this. Okay. And okay. Um, all of you should feel free to, to show up. Um, if you have any, you know, if you want to, if you want to listen, et cetera. So are there, um, we have three members of the public here. Are there any um, questions or comments or um, uh, concerns that any members of the public would like to share with regard to the report? Hi. Mr. Urban, can you How just you? give us your address, please, name my... and address? Uh, I live in, uh, excuse me, 70 Bajero Street, right next to the trail. This is my first foray into any type of conquered, I don't know, we call this politics or community concerns or whatever. Uh, so I, I, I don't know whether my concerns are germane to your report per se, but I had sent an email to uh, Ms. Pike about some issues I had with the bike path and bicyclist safety. And I don't know whether your report has anything in there that addresses any of my concerns or not. So, um, Mr. Urban, can I can yeah, I pause yeah, you? Absolutely. Um, absolutely. I, I received a copy of your email, and when we're done with the committee business, we're actually going to ask you to uh, come in and just share your concerns about safety on the trail. Sounds the, good. The Junction Park recommendations are about safety and separation, but within the confines of Junction Park, uh, which you may know is is right next to the commuter rail station, right. um, and our report, which is <laughs> extremely well written and very informative, is available on the uh, Bruce Freeman Rail Trail Advisory Committee website. But we will come right. back to you with your um, with your concern about um, the trail a little later on. I will be quiet. Would you get? Uh, any other comments from the public? Otherwise, we're going to move to make a motion. Um, further, further edits that will be in the final report. Um, any typos or grammatical errors will be corrected as best as we can. 
The diagrams uh, number JP10 and JP4, which are uh, tied to each of the recommendation one and two, uh, will be updated with cleaner versions by uh, someone on the town staff, removing extraneous lines and text and visually clarifying the recommendation. So that's going to be different in the, in the final report. I want to let you know that. Um, Appendix one title um, has changed to a quote, a brief history of the shared space. Junction Park and the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail. And the referring paragraph on page four has been updated to reflect that new title. Um, the, we had no other changes from tonight. Um, and so I would like to uh, have a motion to approve the report and forward it to the select board. Of the, um, sorry, let me reread that. A motion to approve the report draft as final and authorize the co-chairs to create a final version of the report, including any edits or changes discussed tonight and deliver this report to the select board in fulfillment of their request to the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail Advisory Committee. That would be the motion. I can read it again, if you'd like. I agree, uh, excuse me. I'd like to recommend the motion um, that Nat will now so read. Okay, a motion to approve the report draft and authorize the co-chairs to create a final version of the report, including any edits or changes discussed tonight and deliver this report to the select board in fulfillment of their request to the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail Advisory Committee. That's the motion. So moved. Seconded. Okay, roll call. Um, Ms. Edelman? Approved. Ms. Boardman? Approved. Mr. Follender? Aye. Ms. Miller? Aye. Mr. Soden? Aye. Mr. Welch votes aye. Uh, the motion is uh, passed unanimously by roll call vote. Um, and I would just like to pause and thank the committee for seven months of very hard work. Um, thank you all. And um, uh, Richard and I will make sure that this report gets to the committee um, as this motion has re requested. Uh, before, well before June 30th. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on to the next piece of business. Um, the Willett School Service Day we talked about. Um, Richard, is there anything you'd like to add as a member to, to I guess that? The only thing I would suggest is that perhaps um, a letter could be sent to the, either the parent coordinator or and or teachers, principal, whomever at Willard, thanking them for their work along the trail and hoping that they'll come back next year. <laughs> would would um, um, can I make a motion that um, Richard Follander uh, draft said letter to the to the Willard School and appropriate people? Do we need a motion, Marsha? I just want to know, or can we just, um... we just say we're sending it? Okay, we just say we're sending it. Okay, and maybe Marsha could help identify who I should send it to specifically. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Adrian. You got that? Yes, Good. Adrian. Okay, um, prison cemetery update. Um, we've already noted, um, uh, Marcia, thank you for taking, taking care of this item on our list. Uh, 6.30 tomorrow night at the main branch of the library. Um, and hopefully some of you can, can show up. Any? Uh, yeah, my guess is in terms of that, uh, just quickly, I think there's a, a potentially decent chance that the artwork could be displayed it at the uh, Fowler branch in the lower level there for a while. Mm -hmm. That's a little more flexible than the main library at this point. So yeah. um, I'm not sure, we'll, we'll check it out. Um, and uh, yeah. Did you, um, Richard, I mentioned uh, Mr. Quick, who, who was the- uh, I did contact, he's aware of the meeting. Okay, yeah. perfect, great, great, good, 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 good. Okay. Are there any um, liaison reports? Okay. Um, let's see. The last thing, the last uh, um, committee business item is our next meeting, and we'll come to the public in a second. So don't don't worry. Um, our next meeting is scheduled for July seventh, which is right after um, right after July fourth, because three days after. And so I'm wondering if 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 we, if, if, if committee members can make the seventh or if we should think about moving it back a week. Any co comments, thoughts? And we the are seventh, taking, go the ahead. The seventh is okay with me. Okay, I'm good with it too. 
Oh, no, Everyone? No, okay. okay, good. We'll keep it on the seventh then. All right, good. Thank you for that. Um, correspondence and public comments. Uh, uh, Matt, uh, yes, one sorry. Point. Um, I know it didn't get on the agenda, but I, I do think that we had discussed in the past that July would be a time to uh, talk about the issue of chairpersonship. Yes, that correct. It's on the yeah, it's on the draft agenda that we're we're capturing stuff on. In addition to uh, Deb's e-bikes paper, right. she's been asking us for some answers for a while. So Deb, we'll get to those in July. Well, I think what we'd want to do between now and then is send out the, the I guess you call it a doodle, um, just a survey that way folks, because basically we ask them to choose one of the options um, and to make it super easy, you could send out an email, say, pick your selection, one, two, three, or four. So Okay. All right. So I'll work with you on, on putting together an email for the members okay. and, and um, we, we will, um, we'll send it along. Okay. Um, I have one one other question. When I started a year ago, I thought, Marsha, you said something that you're not going to be here in a year. And I remember being very nervous. <laughs> Did that change? <laughs> um, and my retirement date is January 2023. So the world, okay. the world will end on Phase January 2023. will be completed. Okay. Um, okay. And, right. and I'll leave 2D in the, in the hands of um, my successor. Okay. Okay. All right. At least we have a little bit more time, but thank yeah. you for that. Yeah. Now, on, on the successor topic, I it just, my impression was that in, for most committees or, and Marcia can tell us this, there's a rotating chair, basically. Is that correct? Yes. All right. So I, I'm, I'm just offering people some other member of the committee who's interested in becoming a high muckety muck to consider that as an option. Right, which we will discuss. And, again, and I think the issue for me isn't so much whether I'm, whether I or Nat do it, it's giving other people the opportunity who want to and making it clear that they're, that I'm completely happy to let someone else take these mighty reins of power. Um, and because, you know, again, it could be construed as though we're hogging it and yeah. that's not the case. But I think everyone should consider the possibility of, of of being, um, you know, uh, moving the ladder, so to speak. Yep, yep. So I, in, we, we will have this open and frank discussion in July and anyone who, and I'll, I'll remind our missing members the same thing, anyone who would, who would like to. Um, yeah, and if you want to form a political team. action committee to, to promote your candidacy, you should do it now. <laughs> right. <laughs> Okay, I, I, I believe CCTV is uh, is available for, <laughs> for campaign ads, so. Yeah. Okay, um, so that's for the seventh. And now turning to public comments. Mr. Urban, um, we, we kind of shut you down a little, a little while ago, but now we're opening the floor. Um, no problem. <laughs> please come and um, let us know what your, your letter was. Yeah, sure. Uh, first of all, I want to say uh, I, I love the trail. It's a great resource and you guys have done a wonderful job getting it up to speed and maintaining it and everything else. It's really a gem. And uh, I'm out there probably four to six times a day from anywhere from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. at night. And, uh, and, you know, for the most part, it's a pleasant experience, but I've noticed in the past couple of weeks, kind of especially since the Route 2 bridge has been I suppose unofficially open, uh, meaning that lots of people are using it. I'm not even sure if it's a, what the status is of it and what it happens to be. But I've noticed that a lot of bicyclists um, have been kind of, uh, I don't know, sloppy for want of a better way of putting it in terms of their interaction with pedestrians. Uh, principally, nobody gives a signal when passing from behind. And that, that could be problematic uh, to people walking, certainly. You know, you never know when you might lurch left or right for some unexpected reason, but also with dog walking. I think it's a particular problem, although I keep my dog on a very short leash. Uh, I can't hear the bicyclists 99% of the time. And suddenly they're there, and it's a startling event, both for humans and for animals. Uh, so I, I guess I'd like to see some way to reinforce or to uh, educate the bicyclists on some proper etiquette 
in terms of overtaking people and passing people on the trail. Uh, I also had an incident where I was nearly forced off the trail because a pack of three bicyclists basically hogged the entire trail and I was kind of knocked off into the weeds. So, I, I, you know, another aspect of that is probably to notify bicyclists that they should just be on a single file if they're going to be passing people. Um, those are the two principal things. I mean, I know bicyclists travel at various rates of speed. There are long stretches when they, they can go fast, but it also might be advisable to kind of gently ask people to slow down when they're around the pedestrians and the animals on the trail. Now, I'm not sure how you accomplish all these things. I know there is signage. It's pretty small. I'll bet you 99.9% .9 of the people that use the trail have never even noticed them. Um, I don't know whether it takes some kind of a public education campaign by way of on a weekend, someone out there with flyers at the major intersections, handling them, handing them out to bicycle riders, things of that nature, or even painting or chalking the warnings onto the actual tarmac at different intervals, you know, slow down, give a signal when overtaking, um, <clears throat> don't ride, a, you know, more than one, one person at, uh, in line at a time, things like that. But I, I just, uh, I'm just worried there's going to be an accident, you know, an accident involving me, my wife. Uh, there are a lot of uh, elderly and disabled people from the nearby no nursing home that are using the particular stretch of the trail between the prison and the railroad station. And, you know, I worry for their safety too. people in wheelchairs and walkers and elderly people in general um, that can't hear the bicycles, period. <laughs> so those are my concerns. I, I I don't know what the solutions are other than hopefully the world can become more courteous, but that's probably something I shouldn't hope for too much to, uh, at this stage of my life with all the gray in my beard. Um, so whatever you guys could do to help would be appreciated. Thank you very um, Nat, much. <clears throat> Nat, with your permission, I'd like to make some comments. Yes, um, absolutely. Uh, first, Mike, thank you. Um, so I'm gonna just, I know this is being recorded, but I'm giving permission my health information to be shared. So what is this? You're wondering. This is a broken hand. Um, oh my. This happened on the rail trail. Oh my. Um, bike accidents happen not just from biker to pedestrian, but biker to biker when bikers don't follow rules. I was hit head on oh. by a biker who decided not to follow the rules. And again, I forgive that person and I know they're going to be fine and you know, I, I want people to enjoy riding and I'm going to be fine. Thank God. I'm going to be fine. It's, you know, just by the end of the summer, I'm all good. So I think if we can kind of take a step back and say, this isn't biker to pedestrian or pedestrian to person with unique abilities. This is called, as you said, do we know and follow the rules so that we are all safe? And immediately that takes it out of the kind of what I saw with the other initiative where, oh, they're just the bikers and oh, they're just the pedestrians. Well, guess what? I got news. It's about everybody. And so my suggestion, I, I have lots of ideas because I, I spent a lot of time on the rail trail as a biker. But one of the things that I've been wondering for the last year is if we have an opportunity to engage in a more detailed discussion with other rail trails across the country that for sure, have dealt with this. Sadly, some of them have dealt with it because they've experienced issues and accidents. And so my recommendation is that we, we engage with all the great resources, like we've got Barbara here and, and we've got Marsha who can connect us to other uh, Rails to Trails Conservancy and other groups and say, how do you deal with this? How do you get people to know the rules, wanna follow them, et cetera? Again, I could tell you my ideas, but let's hear from people that have been doing this. Yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you, Deb. Um, Barbara, you had. Yes. Oh, Barbara first, and then Deb, and then Dorcas. When you talked about other rail trails, after I got my letter, I emailed a friend of mine who's been very involved with the Farmington Valley Rail Trail Network in Connecticut, and I said, "Oh, what do you do about this?" And he said you let me know if you can work it out. And they've been around a lot longer than we have. Hmm. I think I they, at one point, they handed, were handing out bells. 
as a they had an event and they gave out bells and I'm not sure the people who are buzzing Mike would put a plastic bell on their bike. Oh, doesn't that be, <laughs> doesn't that be plastic? <laughs> well, whatever, whatever you you know somebody could afford right. to give away. Bikes well, are I, bikes I, are I, great. I, I mean, the bells are great. Um, we in our community, our biker community, people are using bells. Um, mm -hmm. But but again, I like your idea. Let's start talking to other rail trails that have been at this a while. So uh, hold on, Richard. Dorcas, you were, you yeah. had a comment, and then Richard. Oh, I had pretty much the same experience as Mike this weekend walking on the rail trail. People whizzing by me, and these were not professional bike types, uh, you know, racing people. These were people wobbling along on their bikes or whatever, like me. Um, and they just go by, and they don't tell you they're there, and you can't hear them. Um, and they go real close. And I I do think that we need to. Uh, alert them that they need to ring a bell, say on your left, something like that. Um, yeah. Because I do think it's going to be a bigger problem uh, once everybody gets on those trails. Right. So I'm thinking it's um, the summer. Yeah, the, the summer traffic Rich is increasing. Yeah. Richard? I mean, I, um, Barbara mentioned bells. I mean, I, I have a, a, you know, a, a little bell on my bike when specifically for the bike trail. I, I mean, I think it's, I agree that certain people won't do it. I think hardcore cyclists aren't aren't pounding their flesh down the bike trail generally. Um, but the and the bell that I have is metal. It's a tiny little thing. I got this from Mass Bike. I think it's some free thing they handed out. Um, and it, to me, it's a lot more pleasant to a pedestrian to hear a little ding than it is for me to yell out at them. <laughs> On the trail, plus the fact that, as, as, as Dorcas mentioned, the people who are not necessarily heavy the, on your left business is people who are like out there on pace lines, basically. You know, that that's how the on your left thing is going. It's not really what the average cyclist does, you know. So, a bell people can kind of understand, and I think it's more pleasant for a pedestrian. So, I would recommend either through the friends or through some other opportunities as the trail gets more popular. Certainly, we have some events that are safety oriented, and and one of the options would be to have bells and and find out a way to to do that. I'd be glad to help make that happen. I, but I agree, it's, it's just a shared use trail. So the emphasis is on shared. And I can anecdotally talk about a friend of ours who got knocked over by a bike uh, on the uh, tr trail, the Minuteman trail. However, she was wearing headphones and playing music. So she didn't hear that the bike guy was saying on your left and she stepped right in front of him. You know, so it, 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 there's all, you know, the, if you're on a bike, if you're on the shared use trail, don't have headphones that prevent you from hearing people. Yeah. Marcia. I, I just wanted to let Mike know and others here that I did forward the um, email that we received to um, Chief O'Connor and um, Safety Officer Ron Holsinger, and they both recommended or suggested, I asked for suggestions, I didn't say what, what they might be able to do, and Ron also agreed that handing out the free bike bells is something that um, we might want to do on a, on a regular basis. Um, and then to develop a program that is available through social media, through signage, through our maps that we have available through our website. And then um, as Mike suggested, periodically having volunteers out who are reminding people. Uh, we might designate people to ride the trail to remind people. Um, and I would love to be able to work with the friends to continue this effort along the entire stretch throughout all of the communities that are served by the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail. Um, I do like the idea of reaching out to other locations. Um, I have had the, the joy of, of riding bikes in you know, Pennsylvania and upstate New York recently, and people don't do that. I, I, maybe I'm, I'm just naive, or maybe I'm just part of a group that doesn't do these things, but we are always aware of, um, <laughs> Know where people are and what people are doing, and, and try to let people know. So it, to me, it's it's just it's a matter of etiquette and education. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Deb, would would um, would you be interested in maybe thinking a little bit more about? It? I mean, you you had the idea of 
of doing it and you have the you have the mark <laughs> yeah to, 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 would this be something um and you know richard you said you'd be willing to help but maybe something to maybe do some work on but yeah absolutely <clears throat> i'm just a i'm just a fan of um continuous awareness and you know having a campaign you know once and done it's just not going to work because you get right. new people on so yeah i'm fully in support i yes i'd like to participate and i think it does link to the e-bikes because when you think about e-bike as a population that's a whole new group of people that maybe were never on the rail trail or on it differently so i think there's linkage and it makes sense okay sounds good and and i spent an hour on the phone with the bicycle pedestrian coordinator in arlington virginia um they have like 500 miles of trails and some crazy number like that and 45 trail counters, automated trail counters, which is oh, why man. I was talking to, which is why I was talking to him. But and I know some folks at the at the uh, Rail to Trails Conservancy, so I'd be happy to okay. feed those to you. And, and but I think this okay. would be great a great thing for us to kind of take up as a long term um, thing. And okay. yeah, I think it might make sense to consider a you know September you know event, uh, one of the first of perhaps many that would focus on the, this issue. I, unfortunately, I don't see us doing it over the summer and, right. and, and involve, you know, the, the town safety officer, Ron Holsinger as well. And, and the friends. I mean, I think, you know, uh -huh. Barbara, you you guys have been thinking about the, the, the trails that runs through multiple towns. And this is an issue I'm sure that, you know, every town is thinking about. Um, yeah. So your help would be, you know, welcome, I'm sure. Is there any documentation, Barbara, from is it either in general about how many people are injured on bike trails, either nationally or specifically on Bruce Freeman? Do you know of any data that's been collected in that regard? Uh, no, I don't. I think there have been people who have run into bollards. The, in the northern <laughs> section, they have metal bollards. Yes. I it. Okay, <laughs> yeah. you're not the only one. <laughs> Richard, that's hard too because I'm sure a lot of people they get injured and they go home and they may not report right. it. Yeah, it doesn't. It's not like an insurance thing with the police. You've got to file right. a the accident yeah. report. Yeah. All right. And, and so if serious, they would some. There would be a report somewhere, I suppose. And so, Richard, are you thinking that it might be interesting if we launched a camp a the the ongoing uh, perennial campaign in conjunction with the opening of the the new bridge. Well, it, technically, the bridge isn't going to be open to winter now till December, okay. basically. Okay. So that, you know, okay. So this but, would but as Marcia indicated, people and and as as, uh, as Mr. Urban mentioned, people are using it and they're coming yeah. on it from okay. from afar. You know, but we well, can't if, officially if, open it. So what if, what if we we um, turn over to Deb to you and and to Richard, kind of come up with a a set of ideas and for our next meeting maybe we'll spend a few minutes saying okay sure. here's some of the things that we're thinking about doing um and then we can you know marcia i'm sure you can be helpful barbara you as well in terms of, of input for pe people to talk to but maybe uh, we'll put a, an item on the agenda um for for next time um that will you know tie into the e-bike one deb and then we can move from there yeah, you can have, have like a slogan or something like "Ring your bell before your bell gets rung." <laughs> okay, <laughs> wait before you ring. Hold on, that. Adrian. Adrian, did you get that? I think we now have a slogan. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we have a slogan. Follow follow trademark. <laughs> it's, I've got it. I'm rich. Okay. I have a followed procedural by, uh, question. Are we allowed to? This seems dumb, but like we can talk with Barbara and have like a meeting with me, Barbara, and yes, Richard. Yes, two. You know, yes, you and Richard yeah. are two. You are not a subcommittee. Uh, we're asking so, you to yeah, do we're not a quorum. So right, we're, you're not okay. a quorum. So, so we can then you reach out to Barbara and get her input. Yes, like you can. And we can Barbara's get we can run ideas by Mike because remember the public or no? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Right. You are okay. authorized to do that. And if you okay. get arrested for any reason by the state police for breaking the OML, we will stand up for you. Don't <laughs> worry, Deborah. <laughs> we'll be Listen, there. Listen, I need to get between now and my son's wedding, which is on the 16th. So we can just, you know, everything <laughs> tranquilo, tranquilo. <laughs> Okay. Does, does uh, would your son like a, a scarf from the opening of the Bruce Freeman uh, Rail Trail? Barbara, you have any extra scarves you want to share? I, well, yeah, bandanas. You bet. Bandanas. There okay. we go. My my middle son, who is a biker, would appreciate that. He rides the 
um, the Arlington all over the place. So he's down there in DC. Okay. You see, he, he would like a, a yellow phase 2C map bandana, bandana for Mark. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He'll, he'll use it. I'll mail it to you. Okay. Thank you. Good. As long as right. it's not worth more than fifty dollars. Right. Exactly. Oh, we I think to... it's actually thirteen dollars and fifty cents. <laughs> You're okay. saying well, then I have to declare it. Okay. Um, Deb, thank uh, first, Mr. Urban. Thank you for bringing up this topic. Um, Deb and Richard, you have your your marching orders for our next session. Uh, but no work until your son's wedding is done. Right. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, um, Barbara. Um, you had a couple of things you wanted to bring to the table from the friends. Um, yes. you know, Mike, sorry, Mike. Say goodbye. Thank you very much for, okay. for listening. Thanks and, for coming, uh, Mike. Yeah, come yeah. again. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, okay. Have a good night, all. Thank you thank for you your public service. Serving on the committee at some point. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. We will, we'll have openings, so. All right. Take care. Barbara. So a lot of the things that I'm planning to, to bring up ha, have already been touched on, which is amazing. But the one thing that we haven't talked about is how organizations register events on phase two C in Concord. Now, I think we've only had just the Pan Mass kids two or three times, but in the other towns further north, that have been around longer, there, there is a event registration form and they fill it out and it gets sent to a specific person in each town, just so that they can make sure that there aren't two or three groups planning to have a walk or a ride on the same day. And what I'm wondering is who is the person in Concord who would just keep track of this? Marcia. This is done through the town manager's office, and I believe the person is Christopher Carmody, um, and he coordinate. Uh, it, it had been through the select board um, liaison, so I don't know specifics, but if you sent it to the town manager's office or TMO at ConcordMA.gov, there is a form for all events, and all of them are vetted. Uh, they route them to all staff uh, that reviews it and weighs in on what is being planned. So police, fire, health, um, inspections, um, public works, and et cetera. Everybody weighs in. That's great. So let me do that. TMO at ConcordMA.gov? Yes. OK. Uh, Marcia, shouldn't we have something on our website that says if you, if you plan to hold an event? We can add that, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we probably want to do that just to make sure that people know. Well, we have that on the friends. Usually in the newsletter, we say something, but I think we didn't this time but it hasn't been an, an issue. So it's interesting that trail rules came up tonight because the friends are trying to get things coordinated with the trail rules that were agreed on like 15 years ago. Right now, if you ride the trail, let's say you're coming from the North, you have the uniform trail signs that were agreed on with the little icons and the red X's and all that, all the way through Westford. And then Acton has this litany of, I mean, I don't know who's gonna read it, plus there's some that are wrong. And then in Concord, these rules just appeared out of nowhere. Maybe mass dot, I don't know, but the friends donated to the town four and we can donate more of the official rail trail signs that are fairly small actually, but they're on the same post as this other set of rules. So what would be ideal is if someone riding from the north to the south encounters the exact same sign and nothing more. In terms of rules. So Acton is the worst offender because they made up, I mean, if you looked at, I'm sure you haven't read them, but if you looked at them, but I'm wondering if this would be a time before the bridge is open that we could get the mass dot rules or whoever rules they were. If we could get those removed and have only the uniform 
rule signs up? Unfortunately, Barbara, the signs that the friends gave us are the wrong size for the posts that exist. So when Public Works went out there, they, they simply slapped in those signs and they didn't take down the other ones. Okay, well, I'm wondering if with the two posts, if there could be two cross pieces and the official sign could just be mounted in the middle. You're asking somebody to do something that they are not equipped to do. Um, they do not have the resources. Right now we are understaffed in Public Works and uh, do not have that resource. So that's why we're dealing with what we're dealing with. And if you can make signs that are the same size, I can swap them out, but I can't modify the existing posts. Well, we have the uniforms. Okay, well, so you're They're saying- the wrong um, size, Barbara. They're the wrong size. So- I need it bigger. Okay, what size? I don't know. I'd have to go out and measure. Okay, so this comes down to, to, to the next matter that has come up that the friends are very interested in. Can, um, can I just pause you, Barbara, just, yeah. just for a second, just to, to close on this. So uh, you and Marcia will have a, a follow-up conversation about, about the signs. Marcia can send me the dimensions and I will see if I can get the rules sized up to those okay. dimensions. And she can also tell me how many signs we have in concrete. Okay. Okay. Richard, you had a question? I, I just, I, I think based on our Junction Park experience, the simpler the signs, the better. So anything that can be done to highlight what are the most salient requirements, like let people, you know, we just what we spoke about earlier in terms of basic safety. So what I can do is I can- I do not have the time to go out and count the signs. Is there somebody on this committee who could walk certain sections and count I can do that. for me and I'll measure, and measure yep. the signs that are out there? Yep, I can do it. Thanks. Yeah, that's good. I can handle it and I can, I can work with the two of you. And also, Nat, I can forward you a copy because Nat, uh, Richard was saying it should be simple. And that was one of our goals 15 years ago was to make it easily understood I can forward you a copy of sure. the sign. Yeah, I think I think one of the one of the things, Richard, that you're bringing up is that in Junction Park we have a slightly different issue. It's not it's not just the trail, right. and this is what we had all this conversation about. So when people enter Junction Park, it's going to be entering a you know a, a, a more sacred space, for lack of a better term. But on the rest of the trail. Um, I'm, I'm happy to go out, do the measurements and, and engage and just make sure we have uniformity. Because I think that makes sense, running from north to south, you want to have uniformity. And Barbara, you'll be, you'll be charged with getting active to behave. Well, right. So <laughs> um, Nat had suggested, and it was very well received um, uh, among the, the friends, board members in the towns, that we reconvene the uniformity committee or whatever you want to call it of you know try to have at least one staff or you know a committee not a friends but you know like from the advisory committee or from a bpac or and get together and talk about some of the things that have come up like for instance if we were going to to try to improve the interaction between pedestrians and cyclists on the trail, this is something that should be tra trail. All the towns. Yeah, all the towns should be talking about, it. right? Agreed. I mean, and, Marie, you know, I'm, I'm a big, I'm a big uh, fan of, since it's been 15 years, it's probably worth the towns getting back together and the, and the friends convening would be really great. Well, I think actually Marsha was, doing it last time we did it at harvey wheeler but and honestly i don't want to talk about it right now okay but e-bikes is an issue and i don't know if there's any resolution there may not be the e-bikes are there as far as i can tell they're not behaving any worse than anybody else but that's that's something else that they might talk would about. be on the list right and then safety and and there might be some alert like plowing is another issue that's come up um do we plow or not plow i mean these are the things i think would be useful for all the towns to kind of yeah. at least talk about and then 
you know, maybe come up with some, you know, some agreed upon approach. And, and trail maintenance, just for example, I was talking to a guy from Chelmsford yesterday and they took their town plow, they don't plow, but they put a big, I don't know, leaf blower or something on their town plow and they can blow the trail with relative ease. Yeah. So, you know, trail maintenance tips and all. Anyway, yeah. whatever, whatever the towns would like to talk about, as long as we have a, a really good representative representation there okay um, so if, if if you if you would uh, kind of get the if the friends could be the driving force behind it um i'm you know i'm certainly happy to happy to help well you know, i'm wondering marcia if you think uh, last time i think it was in the summer is marcia with us yes yeah, she is she's just muted okay well so i'm wondering marcia if you think that this would be worth trying to, to do in the summer. And it seems like schedules could be a little more open in the, because if we wait till September, everything happens in September and October, and then we have the holidays. And do, could do you think it would be feasible to try to get I town don't staff? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I'm, I'm, I, my, my input is, is, that we we look two or three months out and we just get people to commit to a you know to a day or two far, mm -hmm. farther out. The uniformity um, committee was led by Mike, uh, no, Tom Michaelman. It was not me. Okay. I participated as oh. as Concord's representative mm -hmm. um, before I knew anything, and um, okay. before we had we, before we were even designing. So. Um, there, there are probably different representatives that are necessary from public works and from um, either involved with planning in some fashion. Um, and I think there needs to, I, I don't know who those people are. I, I'd, I'd have to begin from scratch. Um, so, I am away in the month of August. So okay. August is not the month to do this. Okay. Um, and I, I know that others take vacations during the summer. So. Yeah. Um, I'm so in each town and like in Concord, it's important to know who should be included. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, just for example, when we did the one of the things that came up came out of the uniformity committee was that we agreed on a trail logo, which has been widely used because the friends had their train logo, but we thought we needed a trail logo. We also, we also decided that mile zero would start at Cross Point Towers, which was wrong because <laughs> um, it didn't work with any of the remaining granite markers such as we had. So trail mile zero really is in Lowell someplace. So, and then we spent a lot of time working on rules that we thought were simple um, to understand. And, and I think that was the, the three main takeaways. So can, can, can I suggest, um, uh, Barbara, that we, we do some more thinking. We don't try and drive this in the summertime. It feels like we have a, a number of moving okay. parts, but it's worthwhile. Okay. Um, and I'm happy to follow up with you from, from okay. the, taking, right, off my, taking off my Bruce Stream and Rail Trail hat, putting on my network convening hat. I'm happy yeah. to think with you about that. Um, okay, so maybe work over the summer to get to get something right going, up, yeah. should be included in yep. um, from the different towns. Right, I think okay. so. And the other thing, um, this this isn't just this is this is the map from phase All one right. to a, and someday we would like to have a single piece of paper that goes all the way at least through two D. But what we would be looking for would be a map of 2C, you know, might be updated to show the bike shelters or whatever, and 2B. And I don't think we're gonna put together anything that looks like this, but it would be nice to have it all on one piece of paper. We could put it at the kiosk or put it at the visitor center. They love maps. Um, and Jill did a great job on 2C, and I don't know if she can be prevailed upon to just expand that. To cover the crossing of Route 2. 
Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know where we stand on maps. Right now, the map that she did was, you know, was very nice, easily understood, made several copies, took some down to the visitor center and, and all. Um, but I don't know if it would be possible for us to expand that to include 2B. Mar Marcia, what's your take on doing that? I can coordinate with IT and see if uh, that's something that we can add to the, the tasks. Um, there's a lot going on. And yeah. as I said, staffing is an issue this summer. Yeah. But it's something we could look to do maybe before the end of the year when yeah. the bridge opens and get it up. Okay. All right. Thank you, Marcia, for, for that. And just point out, if you haven't seen it, that the Friends Spring Summer newsletter is finally out. I, I got it. In the well, they got mailed, they got emailed, some in the kiosks or the kiosk um, and around town libraries. So. Got my copy. Good. Okay, Barbara, thank you so much. You're and thank, the, thank the friends for, for their support of the, of the trail. Well, that's our job. Right, I know, I know. And Concord <laughs> is the most important part of the trail, okay? Just so we know. <laughs> okay, uh, don't write that down, Adrian. Um, uh, so our next meeting will be uh, July 7th at 7 p.m. It will be, um, God willing, a hybrid meeting at 141 Kai's Road. Um, Mar Marcia, is that correct? Yes, yes, that's Perfect. correct. Well, um, at, assuming that no one else is using the room that night. Um, okay. But I will confirm that cross, tomorrow. Cross our fingers. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so I'd like a... Um, hey, Nat, the, just before yeah. you continue, <clears throat> it occurred to me that we have three individuals, I believe, who are not here tonight. That's correct. Um, Tracy, Sam, and uh, Mary Beth. Okay. Assuming, I'm assuming they all can go, we're good on the 7th, but if they, the same three can't join tonight and any one of us can't, we're in trouble. So mm -hmm. that's all. We just it is what it is. I've, yeah. I've one of, one very, of us uh, could not be here. We still have five, so. Yeah. Okay, okay, that's fine. Very good. I think you have one hand up. Dory. Who had a hand? Dory. Dory? Did Dory, Dory have a hand, hand up? Has a hand up. I don't see it. I don't see it. It's online. Okay. Okay. Huh. okay. I, I have one more thing. Uh, walking the rail trail this weekend, I went through the Warner Pond Park. I think that's going to be a big center for bicycles. Big, huge center. That may take some of the pressure off Junction Park too. I don't know. Yeah. Like, it's, it's beautiful. When's it going to be done, Marcia? Can we go swimming in, 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 in August? <laughs> yeah, there's no swimming at Warner's Pond. Unless, oh, unless, geez. unless you like leeches. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, it is expected to be completed, I think, well, a certain phase is expected to be completed this month. Um, they were working on finalizing it. I'm not sure about the restrooms. I'm hoping that they'll be completed this summer as well. Um, but th there's, there are a number of, there are several contracts in, in the works there. So, yeah, yes. looks great. Soon. Looks really cool. You know when uh, the dredging starts? No, I don't. Um, I know um, Delia is um, working with the, the there, there's a couple of permits that they need to get, uh, Army Corps and one other, and uh, is working on that now. So the dredging might take place this fall or next fall. Uh, it, it, it's weather dependent, um, low water dependent. Yep. Got it. Okay. Dorcas, thank you for, for that. Um, I'd like a motion to close the meeting. So moved. A second. Oh, thank you. Uh, we'll take a roll call. Ms. Edelman. Agreed. Ms. Boardman. Aye. Mr. Follender. Aye. Ms. Miller. Aye. Mr. Soden. Aye. Mr. Welch says aye. Uh, this meeting of the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail Advisory Committee is finished at 8.15 p.m. I'd like to thank all of you for your time, and I wish you a wonderful...